So uh, I collaborate with the Center for Services Leadership there at Arizona State University, which is uh, housed kind of within the marketing department of the school. They've developed a, a lot of, um, of the newest and hottest theories and, and approaches in that domain. Um, it doesn't necessarily, what they've done doesn't necessarily map to the technology domain. If you want to do research on, on you know, on using cloud providers, right? So for applications, so for, let's say from my point of view, if I want to run a parallel application on the cloud, I may want, I may care about say network performance. Mm -hmm. And how do I find that out? How do I find out from a particular provider if you're going to be able to guarantee me whether it's 100 megabits per second between all, between 100 different nodes or whatever? How do I ask that now? Mm -hmm. I can't do that right now. And hopefully that'll be, that'll be, be able to do that sometime in the not too distant future. The biggest challenges in big data depend on where the bigness is. As I mentioned in my speech, we talk about big volume, big velocity, big variety. Um, so if you've got petabytes and exabytes and soon to be zettabytes and yottabytes, that's huge amounts of data that, uh, that again, we have to have new database architectures, greater degrees of parallelism, to figure out how to process it effectively. Uh, the challenges are slightly different if um, data is coming at you out of a fire hose or some mega fire hose. Uh, and, and again, parallelizing is, is at the source of anything involving big data. You can't talk about big data without talking about parallel processing, I believe. Uh, the most challenging dimension is high variety. Um, a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand small data sets. How do we make sense out of them in a, in a fashion that uh, allows computers to help us find out what's there, what format it's in, and how we use it? Uh, in that dimension, uh, as well as some of the others, this mystical term semantics starts, starts coming into play. How do, we, how do we specify meaning of the data, not just the form, not just the bit strings. How do we, how do we know what those bit strings mean given a various context? I think going forward with a new demand on the big data is no longer, you know, you can process the data for a couple of months and then coming up result. For example, you know, the data, you know, related to GPS, trying to find your location such I can do a product recommendation for you. Those are the data need to be inject, inject the data at a very high speed, process the data in a high speed, at the same time able to know your location and print a coupon for you to get a coffee you know, at Starbucks or whatever. Those are demand, so-called low latency, almost to real-time process of the data. And that's where the big challenge is, is going to be in the commercial, in the commercial world in the so-called business decision uh, using big data. OpenStack is a recipe right now, uh, uh, making it more robust so that customers can stand up clouds that are highly available, reliable on top of OpenStack. Some of the most interesting things have been uh, how businesses can conceive of ways to leverage service to produce value that academics don't often realize. I think now actually cloud computing seems to be at the same place that parallel computing was maybe 15 or 20 years ago where there were no standards. And what happened was a bunch of people, academics and people from government labs and people from industry got together and decided this was not a sustainable future, that, that it was going to impede progress on, from, from the user side. And so I think clouds are actually at, at almost, almost at that same point where it's time to actually seriously think about standards so that clouds can become interop that users can interoperate across different cloud providers. And that's up, uh, there has to be, again, the business model there. There's an interesting question now because cloud providers are trying to make money. The special issue about uh, service computing really is that uh, it is very people-oriented. Okay, it's different from traditional kind of uh, research in computer science. Traditional kind are very system oriented. But when we use the word service computing in this conference, this means that uh, we take uh, people uh, into consideration. And as a result, uh, different kind of people really have different needs. And uh, uh, the culture will play a role here. So people, customers in the United States and the customers in Asia will be different customers. 
And as a result, the research and the methodology, as well as the uh, initiative from the industry, will become different. And uh, so there will be different niche in different kind of uh, market in that way. And that's exciting about the thing. I'm told that most of the big companies are working on semantics in the back room, knowing that the time will come when they've pushed keyword technology to the limit and they'll need to move on to key sentence and concept sentence technologies, like is a way I would describe the, the semantic technology. It requires a development of vocabularies, controlled vocabularies, sometimes called ontologies to mystify the public. Uh, and uh, these, are, these are difficult. They're too hard and too easy. I talk with researchers and research organizations. They say, oh, an ontology, a vocabulary, that's just infrastructure. We support research. We don't support infrastructure. Well, that means they think it's too easy. On the other hand, you can't really press forward until you do have the vocabularies. And the other part that's uh, interesting is the convergence of uh, cloud and mobile applications. So I think that uh, what we see is that um, there are many, many applications that are uh, mobile and that were also built for the cloud. And I think one of the uh, exciting parts where I, th I think there'll be a lot of innovation is how are we going to take mobile and use the cloud effectively? So whether this means you know, very easily being able to scale up and down or being able to um, replicate these applications very quickly so as people move around the world, you can then you know, have all of this information and these applications follow them. The semantic web is often called linked open data. Linked open data is a close cousin to the semantic web with slightly different emphases. Um, it's still a small community. It's like a secret sauce that makes things work but hasn't come to the public attention. Uh, the friend of a friend protocols are uh, our semantic web type protocols and they make LinkedIn and Facebook and other types of social networking systems work. Uh, without them, uh, we, we wouldn't be able to do it. In terms of actually dealing with big data, I think that um, for some kinds of applications where the parallelism is actually, let's say, there's not a whole lot of communication, so you can just sort of split up the data and then operate on it independently, that you can do right now, sort of using a, a, on a cloud infrastructure basically having the data partitioned in a reasonable way and then splitting up the computation so that then, but, but what's missing now is if you, if you do have, let's say in a map reduce company, the reduce step where you have to do that shuffle, doing that in a cloud, uh, in a cloud where you don't have any idea of how expensive the costs are to move the data around, or it's very difficult to figure that out, that's where you're gonna, uh, or to actually, or to request the, uh, a level of service that you need. It's going to be actually very difficult to do that right now, but that, that in some ways that's, that's going to have to change. So at this conference you'll see there's you know, the themes of cloud, services computing, mobile, and big data. And people consider this to be like the third or the fourth frontier, depending on how you look at it. And from the talks that I've heard, I think people have like, you know, ideas of how this is going to affect computing and our own personal world in the next you know five years or so but I don't see you know that anybody has been able to tie all of this together and say okay this is where we're going to be it's an interesting question about the multi-sector nature of this business um, sometimes the federal government is in the lead and creates a new area the computer itself was created by the federal government the uh, Telegraph was created under federal support that wouldn't have happened otherwise. The internet was created under federal support. So in all these cases, there was no industry. Uh, the, the government lent its hand and its money to a green field and great results happened. Big data is a little bit different. If you look at the, the Googles and the Amazons, et cetera, of the world, we see an awful lot of big data development that has already occurred in the private sector. So we're trying to articulate what is already known from the private sector, what developments are going on, where would federal research support help uh, propel things forward more rapidly than they might, might uh, be propelled otherwise. 
the bottom line conclusion is that probably as big data begins to reshape how organizations operate, big services will similarly reshape. And the two together, I think, are going to be a very compelling force that uh, pretty much change the way we do a lot of things. Big data, uh, mobile, and social, these three. Uh, we don't know where it's going to take us, but we know it's a very exciting ride.